really doing for us. I just put a bunch of new straw from there, I like the straw from their coop in. But if you dig down, uh, you open this up, there's some nice compost down there. So in a few months we'll take everything out of this and um, put it into the garden, mix it with like some normal soil. But yeah, this is looking quite good. There's a few stones in here but We'll sieve it through, we'll put it through some wire mesh to get all the stones out. Yeah, that's looking really good down there. And the chickens just, they turn it all over constantly, like scratching for food. And they create this thick layer here and we just put more mulch on um, every once in a while. Whatever's in their coop goes in here as well for extra nitrogen. And uh, yeah, within six months you get fresh compost basically, really rich fresh compost as well and they take all the seeds out of here for you too so it's just a win-win situation really. garlic I got at the market and I planned that out today I have a bunch more in the house but I'll just see how far I get before it gets dark cabbage and Christmas cabbage. They're Portuguese cabbages and they grow really really well here. They actually grow a bit better than the German seeds that I have. Um, so yeah I'm quite excited to try them in a few months. They should grow quite tall judging by the neighbours and uh, they should provide us with greens all year round in the end if everything goes right. I've like last spring I've had loads of issues with cabbage moths and um, cabbage flies I think like the the caterpillars cabbage caterpillars I think they're called um, 
they were just eating all of my crops and I don't have the time to hand like to collect all of them and then put them onto the nasturtiums or something like that or feed them to the chickens so at the end of summer the camera came round and they stripped um, five meters off the sides of the road um, and they took out loads of mimosa which is an invasive plant species that grows really really fast and it's super bendy so I've rigged up this makeshift tunnel Ooh. I've rigged up this makeshift tunnel and I put cloth over it um, actually protective cloth and it works so far the only things that seem to be eating my plants are the slugs and the grasshoppers that still seem to kind of find their ways in but yeah no cabbage moths so far which is a good sign because my friend lost all of hers to the caterpillars already found someone amongst the cabbages who shouldn't be there and who's gonna be dinner for the chickens really uh, Oh, I don't like them. Really fat snail slug. This fazalis has been growing beautifully ever since the rains came back. There's loads of fruit in it now. Um, they're really rich in vitamin C and they just taste really nice and interesting. So I'm really happy that they finally came up. They didn't grow all summer. All summer they stayed about this tall. And then ever since the rains came back in September they've been just putting on loads of growth and loads of fruit so it's a good sign and they grow together they grow well together with the cabbages actually and our um, paprika here started flowering as well the tomatoes did start flowering but now because of all this rain they um, they're actually rotting so I'll pull the rest of them up it's eh, it's time for them to go So this is our peanut bed and we seeded these peanuts in pots around February, March and transplanted them in April. It's November now, the end of November and yeah we've just pulled one up. It's starting to go a little bit mouldy around the bottom. We got a few peanuts off it but I was kind of hoping for more. I think next year we'll plant them in bigger beds, more space and we'll see what happens. Otherwise they've they've been growing quite well throughout the year and they just look ready to come up. They're beginning to die off, brown off on the edges. Oh there's a few. Oh, hey look at this. This one's a lot better than the first one but still some of them are going bad as you can see here. I think maybe it's been in the ground too long but we've never We've never done peanuts before, so this is a learning experience. You can also see the mold developing around there. I think it's all the rain as well, because it was raining for like a month. Yeah, we had now, some, basically. some very intense rain recently. This is just a little break in the in the rain, really. Yeah, maybe next year we'll take them out a little bit earlier. Let's like, put them in a bigger bed next year. Yeah, yeah, like issue. wider bed, and maybe without any um, rim around it. Yeah, we'll something less, like that. Less mold maybe as well. Yeah. yeah, I pulled the mulch back like halfway through the year. It's not bad though for like the first growing, like at least we grew some, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think some animals have been in them as well. Looks like some worms have been in here. Oh no! <laughs> oh, there's a few there, but I think, did I just pull? Oh no, they're, they're the roots. Yeah, I'll give those to the pigs. Damn! Oh, look at this one, Jackie. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I mean, if we had like a hundred of these plants, and then we yeah, could make peanut butter. Make a few jars of peanut butter. So here is what it's all been about. Yeah. And I have hopes for next year. Me too. This was a good, like this was an experiment. The yeah. big peanut fans. Yeah, I was very enthusiastic about these. So we just wanted to know if we can grow them, and we definitely can grow them. Yeah. But we learned quite a bit. Yeah, I think with a bit less mulch because all these all these pegs like this for example this plant has one two three four five five 
kind of developed pegs plus several more smaller ones, you know. Perhaps the mulch is just too thick for these pegs to get down and make nuts, although they're technically beans. Yeah, so I think maybe less mulch, bigger beds, and we bring them up a little bit earlier. Yeah. Because these plants are going bad, we're losing nuts. Yeah, I think when we have more plants as well, you know, we can pull one up as a, like, you know, just check every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. We only, I think we only had five of them this year. They smell good. Oh, wow. Okay. Ah, as a proof of concept, a success. I would call this another successful failure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Do you want to take the other ones off? And then oh, oh yeah, there's more. I give them to the, the ones <laughs> that one just well. failed. I gave them to. I give them to the pigs. Yeah. Okay. Today I want to do some planting because some of the um, seedlings that I planted a few months ago didn't really come up. So I have some rainbow chard, some dinosaur kale and um, spinach. I'm going to use this butterfly spinach. It should grow well right now. I also planted out some borage and some broccoli into these trays. And the rest I think can just go in directly, yeah. yeah so the thing is, I've planted spinach out a bunch of times now here. And it just never really comes up. It's kind of weird. So I've direct seeded it and I've put it into little planting trays like these ones. And um, when I put them out into the garden, they just don't thrive. They stay really small or just die off. In the spring, I thought it was because of the water situation. But like now you can see that some in autumn and they came up, but they're, they're still like two centimeters tall might be the amount of sun that these beds get right now which is not maybe not enough so I'll just try a few different spots with these seedlings now when they come up and just hope that they they grow well um, I really like spinach it's a bit of a shame it's like one of my favorite foods 10 year old me wouldn't believe but yeah same with dinosaur kale, I seeded some into these trays and it just stayed really small, so I'll just give it another chance. I'd already seeded some in July, but the ants here are insane, so I seeded them into trays and the trays were stored on the ground and the ants just carried them off within minutes. So nothing ever came up there, I've watered them and um, it's completely pointless because there was nothing in there anymore, the ants had taken all these seeds. got a whole tray of spinach now and now I'm gonna do half half I'm gonna to do like two rows of dinosaur kale one row of broccoli and one row of um, oh damn how's it called rainbow chard and we'll just hope that it comes up again these are German kale seeds so maybe they're not exactly um, adapted to this climate but that's what I had left over from our time in Germany and we're not wasting seeds here so yeah we'll just hope for the best where we are located it's zone 10 or almost zone 9b um, because we're quite high up we're at 500 meters above sea level so we get we do get cold temperatures like um, my hibiscus that I had planted out actually died last night because we had like I think four degrees or something like that when I came this morning it was just it had rotten um, so we do get these colder temperatures and it's really wet here this these days but yeah we can still grow year-round here um, um, it's in the winters it's mostly just the brassicas and um, leafy greens that we can grow which is fine by me um, it's a bit stressful actually 
Um, normally you get like this really like this rest se the, the season of rest where no nothing really grows in the garden and here everything grows so I have onions in the beds right now I have uh, beetroots, carrots, a bunch of stuff actually um, and the beetroots and carrots are doing quite well the onions as well and I sowed out a bunch of garlic so hopefully we're gonna have a nice last season in this garden before we move to the olive grove During the last video that we filmed, we were talking a lot about how the whole month had basically just been a big shit show. Our toddler almost died by choking. We all got really, really sick. Everything on our to-do list was left undone for a month. But since then, things have been getting better and we're feeling better too. First off, our pig, who had a little bit of a fall on, in the terrace woods, her leg is getting better now. She's running around on it. Every time I go over there, she's running up to the fence to say hello, and she just looks happy, and that makes us happy too. In addition to that, we've had discussions and we've made some compromises on our plans that makes things work better. Like, we're delaying renovation of the house, essentially over winter. We will do some work but we're gonna focus more energy on pressing outdoor tasks like firewood. We've bought firewood to help us get through this winter and the house is now warm. And we're getting ready now to cut down more trees, thinning out the oak forest. We have young oak forest and it's really thick. So we're gonna remove a certain amount of trees from there and start seasoning them. In about three years, we should be completely firewood independent. And yeah, we're just, we're not feeling so bad anymore like we were during the sickness and the hospital visit and, and all that. And we're looking forward to the future. It's not gonna be exactly how we planned. It's not gonna be exactly how we planned, but it's still gonna be awesome and that's what counts. <laughs>